Nick has just released a brand new 2.1 video model which is actually a much needed improvement. This one improves across the board with lighting, consistency and realism. And talking about realism, this model was definitely built for that. You're going to get very realistic results out of this new video model and I'll be showing you a bunch of examples. So let's get started. So from the homepage, you guys can obviously watch this video clip over here that showcases what 2.1 is capable of doing. It's 100% generated by the community, which is awesome. Uh, but by default, here at the bottom, you should have the 2.1 model selected. So with 2.1, we can generate five second videos at 1080p resolution. We can do text to video, image to video and ingredients. Now I'll be showing you ingredients later in this video. It's a super amazing feature on the platform that allows multi entity consistency. But let's start straight away with text to video. So both text to video and image to video consume 35 credits per generation to do text to video in this prompt box over here. This is where we essentially type in our prompt. Now major props to someone who was part of the early testing phase of 2.1 called X visual new FX. They actually have a prompting structure. Now, of course, you guys don't have to follow this exactly, but it is a nice way to maybe get, you know, different results. So with this in mind, I'm going to type in the following prompt. I'll say a cinematic shot captures a capybara, relaxes in a hot spring during sunset, a cocktail is placed on a rock, muted colors. So with that typed out, all I have to do is click on this icon and it will start generating my video. Actually, before I click on generate, I want to talk about advanced options because this is where you choose your aspect ratio. If you want widescreen or vertical, you can also do negative prompting. So negative prompting is a way to tell the AI about things that you don't want to appear in your video generation, like bad anatomy or blurry. You just type it in over here and then a seed. Uh, this is basically a code that tells the AI how to start making a video. So for instance, if I put the number one, it means that for all of my future generations, they are going to have a very similar result or similar composition uh, but to be honest I don't use seed and I don't use negative prompt I just choose an aspect ratio and then I click on apply and then when I click on this icon to generate it you'll actually switch over to the my li library tab and you'll start seeing your video generating and this is our end result. And of course, this looks amazing. The prompt adherence is incredible. I mean, everything that I've mentioned in that prompt is visible within the end result. We've got the super chilled capybara waiting to sip on its cocktail. And you guys can see just how well 2.1 excels at realism. Now, of course, you guys can type anything into the prompt box, but following a prompt structure actually gives you more flexibility because you can adjust certain elements of your video generation. For instance, my first generation had, you know, the inclusion of muted colors, which of, of course is going to add color to my video generation. It's supposed to be a little bit more lower saturated, but the video has color enabled. If I replace muted colors with something that's black and white, I'm going to get, you know, all of the other elements except my video generated is going to be in black and white but I can take it a step further and maybe even instruct the prompt to let everything else be in black and white but just have the the cocktail in full color and because of the good prompt adherence it can actually generate videos like that so a prompt structure definitely gives you more flexibility for editing your end result that also means you can adjust other elements of the prompt structure, for instance, the camera shots. Uh, now 2.1 does a decent job at understanding camera angles. Sometimes it does struggle, uh, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try different camera shots. And with that said, here is an amazing resource that's completely free that you guys can check out online that has 50 different types of camera shots, angles, and techniques that have been used in movies throughout the years. So you guys can have a look at this resource to get some inspiration. So as you can see, the 2.1 model completely excels with text to video. So have fun with it. It has good prompt adherence and you are going to get some amazing results. Image to video is very easy to do. You can either just click on this icon over here called image and manually load in an image just like that. Or you can just drag and drop an image in here as well just by doing that. Right now, it's just a matter of crafting a prompt or you can click on generate right now and just let the AI guess what it sees in the image and then bring it to life. But I always like including a prompt uh, just to give the AI a bit more guidance. So with something like this, you know, a macro, uh, some macro photography of the snail, I basically said macro photography of a snail with an ornate pearlescent blue shell on a leaf. And then I clicked on generate and this is the result that it gave me. And 
Yeah, this this looks amazing. I mean, this looks like something straight out of a nature documentary. Uh, so the model definitely excels with close-ups, and you guys should try it, as well as animals. Uh, but that's how you do image to video. It's literally that simple. So of course, 2.1 also excels with image to video. So have fun with it. Bring your images to life. It's amazing that AI can turn a static image into a moving image. So have fun with this technology. Now I'll show you guys various use cases that you can try with Pika 2.1. This model completely shines when it comes to realism, and in my opinion, this is what this model was built for. So I've tested this with humans, and the amount of consistency and quality with extreme close-ups looks absolutely incredible. But it's not just human beings. If you have extreme close-ups of animals as well, maybe you've got some macro photography that's now converted into video, it's going to look absolutely amazing. This model also works very well with environments, whether it's a realistic environment or even something that's fantasy. Because this model is built on realism, it's going to bring various elements to life as long as you're prompting for it. For instance, if you're prompting, you know, for water to be flowing or curtains to be blowing in the wind or the clouds to be moving in the sky, it's going to do a really good job with bringing your images to life. It also does a really good job with bringing animals to life. Whether you've got a realistic looking animal or a fantasy creature, the model just understands how to make these animals move. You can even have human beings interacting with these creatures and it can give you some interesting results. This also means that you can put animals in the most ridiculous scenarios if you want to have a little bit of a laugh. You can generate text using text to video and this model actually holds up quite well. A good rule of thumb, keep the text that you are going to generate short because I've noticed if you start generating, you know, long sentences, you're just going to get nonsensical end results because this model is not perfect. Uh, but when it does work well, you can get some really good results. I've got animals holding signs and everything is legible. Uh, I tried it with human beings as well. And probably the most useful use case is to generate text into different styles. So text made out of balloons, text made out of moss with insects on it, or text made out of glass and coral. Uh, so you can really have a lot of fun with this and I encourage you to try it. Of course, I had to test walking because this is just an ongoing problem with a lot of other AI video generators. You'll get that double step that can happen, but this one works out exceptionally well. My best use case was generating videos of a fashion runway. So if you've got humans or even animals that are wearing, you know, items of clothing and you want them to walk down the runway, it's going to work out very well. So give that a try and create your own fashion shows. This model is built for realism, but you're not just limited to realism because you can try other styles as well. Uh, I definitely wanted to test this with anime and this, the results actually surprised me uh, because it creates like this blend between realism and the anime aesthetic, uh, which I think actually looks quite beautiful. So I highly recommend giving that a try and see what results you end up getting. I even tried it with an image of, you know, something that looks like a 3D character that's been sculpted and it managed to bring it to life as well. So you're not just limited to realism, try other styles as well and see what you end up getting. The emotional range, in my opinion, is a little bit limited. Now, of course, Pika can generate beautiful videos of human beings smiling, but if you generate, you know, other emotions like crying or shouting while they're angry or surprised, uh, sometimes you'll get some decent results. But if I compare this directly with Hilo, uh, which is the king of emotion, uh, this is where I can see that, you know, the emotional range is a little bit limited. However, Pika can still give you some decent results if you're going for those emotive performances. No AI video generator is perfect and I want to be honest and discuss some limitations. So I noticed that this model does not understand how human beings should eat food. If you guys want a better model that can understand how to do this better, you probably want to use Kling. You'll also run into issues with human beings smoking cigarettes or cigars. The model just does not understand how to generate that. You'll also encounter those wonky hands, which seems to be a problem with literally every AI video generator. It doesn't happen all the time, but you might get some wonky results. Also, prompting with camera movement can be a little bit of a challenge. Sometimes it doesn't understand the movement that's within your prompt. So you might have to do a couple re-rolls. 
Now this next feature is absolutely mind blowing and you guys have to try it, it's called ingredients. So this allows you to upload multiple images and then you essentially type in a prompt and when you click on generate, the AI is going to work its magic to essentially merge all of these elements together into a single video generation. It's revolutionary for storytelling and this is how you use it. So ingredients does work with the 2.1 version. To access ingredients, you'll see at the bottom over here, it says ingredients. Now each ingredients video costs 60 credits to generate and to use ingredients is very simple. You just drag and drop your images over here. So I'm going to drag an image of a character. I'm going to drag an item of clothing they should be wearing. And then in this case, I'm going to have a prop, which is going to be a parrot and then an image of my environment as well. So just drag it over here and we are good to go. At this point, you can actually click on this button to generate a video, but I'm going to recommend that you guys include a prompt because you need to tell the AI how these elements relate to each other. So I'm going to use the following prompt. I'll say a close-up shot of a woman wearing a white Roman tunic. She has a white parrot on her shoulder, standing by the balcony of a white marble structure with huge burnt orange curtains blowing in the wind. So that's obviously in reference to the environment. Now you'll also notice that there's a slide over here called Precise and Creative. By leaving it on Precise, uh, the, the AI won't deviate away too much from the prompt and the images. It'll stay true to it. If you go to Creative, well, you'll get more creative end results, but the person in that generated video might not really look like the image. Uh, so I recommend leaving that on Precise. Now, of course, you can also choose your aspect ratio over here and I noticed I got the best results on 16 by 9 uh, because it allowed me to have all of those elements visible in the end uh, the final generation and then once that's ready you've got your images you've got your prompt click on this button to generate your ingredients video now here are some examples I generated with ingredients using those four elements and you can see the prompt as well and I think it's incredible that I can take four different elements and combine them together into a single video. Uh, this technology is absolutely incredible and it unlocks a whole new world of storytelling. If you want some more inspiration for generating ingredients videos, just click on templates and they've got a whole bunch of examples over here. You can see this was generated with ingredients. So if you like one of these examples, for instance, this one over here, you just click on use template. All right, and then it places everything here at the bottom. So it will include the image that was used as well as the outfit this person is wearing and then the prompt. So it's just a matter of replacing these images with your own. And then when you're ready, just click on this button to generate. Another fun feature to try on Pika is called Peak Effects. So if you left click on here, it'll bring up this list of all of these preset effects. So what's awesome about this, you don't need to include any additional prompting. What you see over here is what you're going to get with your end result. Now there's a whole bunch of crazy effects over here. You can inflate things, cakeify it, squish it, poke it. You can have fun with the stuff. It'll definitely melt your brain or whoever you decide to show that video to. It's just fun to use. So in this case, let's say I want to use peel it. I just left click on that effect. You can see it places it in this orange text. And then I just need to drag and drop an image over here. And I'm good to go. So each video you generate with peak effects only consumes 15 credits. So now you just click on this button and it will generate that video for you. So this is the end result of peel it. And yeah, this looks crazy. It also adds a sound effect to the video. So if I enable this. So that's cool, just uh, something additional that's added to the video as well. But yeah, go ahead and play around with peak effects. They're quite fun to use. Some last minute tips. If you hover over the video, you can click on this icon to download the video. You can also favorite this video and add it to that category. You can share it across social media. If you click on reprompt, it's essentially going to place whatever prompt was used over here into this box. Now this is just text to video. That's why it's just the text being placed in here. But if you did image to video and you clicked on reprompt, it'll also place the image over here that was used. If you click on retry, it's basically going to retry and give you another result within this box. So this is good UI design. It keeps everything nice and organized and you can just flip between all of your different uh, generations that you used for retry. If you click on these three dots, you can also delete or add to a folder. So I'm all about transparency and you guys are definitely going to need a plan in order to use the 2.1 version. You can use it for free, but you'll only have access to effects. Now also pay attention to the amount, uh, the amount of monthly credits you receive and then the amount of credits that get used for, you know, different services on the platform. In my opinion, the $35 a month 
plan is probably going to give you a good run for your money uh, but if you are a big spender then of course you'll get the most value out of the 95 dollar plan uh, so yeah you know compute power is expensive uh, if you guys want to generate these videos it is going to be a little bit costly but you can still give it a try using the 10 dollar plan so now that I've showed you guys how to use the brand new model as well as other features on the platform, you guys let me know what you think about Pika. There's definitely a lot of potential over here. It can generate some incredibly realistic results and both the text to video and image to video work very well. And then we've obviously got the inclusion of ingredients, which is multi-entity consistency, which is super powerful. So you guys go ahead. If you're going to use Pika, create some magic. And as always, you guys are awesome. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.